Next on HBO, World Championship Boxing offers a heavyweight championship fight from New York. Riddick Bowe's first defense of the title he won in November against challenger Michael Dokes. Heavyweight Championship Boxing returns to Madison Square Garden on the Great White Way. Next on HBO. presentation of HBO Sports celebrating 20 years of world championship boxing this is where he grew up this is where he dreamed of being a nine-mile journey that can be light years away when you're one of 13 children just trying to survive the drug-infested section of Brownsville, Brooklyn. I knew that through hard work and perseverance and determination, I would escape the ghetto. There was a day when they all came to the greatest boxing arena in the world to see the likes of Joe Lewis, Rocky Marciano, and Muhammad Ali. And there was a day when he won four golden gloves in that very same ring and dreamed of when they would come to see him. It has always been a childhood dream of mine to return to the garden just to fight. Goes to him with an uppercut, and just like that, the champion struggles to stay on his feet. And then one night, he achieved greatness. The young boy from Brownsville had become the heavyweight champion of the world, and the mecca of boxing was now just a stone's throw away. Return to the garden tonight it's a dream come true. I have the opportunity to perform in front of my family and friends. Yes, there is nothing like a dream to create the future. And so tonight, in a heavyweight championship fight from Madison Square Garden in New York City, HBO Sports presents The Homecoming as Riddick Bowe defends his WBA and IBF titles against Michael Dokes. Six years have passed since New York last hosted a heavyweight championship fight. Tonight, the electricity in Times Square parallels that of another landmark just eight blocks south. 22 years ago, Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier staged one of the greatest spectacles ever held at any of the four Madison Square Garden buildings. While tonight's matchup pales in comparison, the gross receipts have already surpassed those of any event ever held in any of New York's Madison Square Gardens. And so tonight, live from New York, HBO Sports presents the first title defense for WBA and IBF heavyweight champion Riddick Bowe against former champion Michael Dokes. It has been a day of snow and rain in New York City, but it gave way to a beautiful afternoon and a near capacity crowd, perhaps 18,000 plus, in an unexpected flood of ticket sales We'll pile into the garden tonight, a tribute to the popularity of the new heavyweight champion who wanted so badly to bring his title home to the city of New York and defend it in front of his friends and family from Brooklyn. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to HBO's World Championship Boxing. We begin this telecast, sadly, by telling you that this telecast takes place for all of us at HBO Sports under an almost unbearable pall of sadness. Just before coming on the air tonight, we received the news that our good friend and colleague, tennis star, humanitarian, historian, author, Arthur Ashe, is dead tonight. Our thoughts throughout the entire evening will be with Arthur's wife, Jeannie, his daughter, Camera, his entire family, and the millions and millions who loved him. We dedicate our work here tonight to the man who was our colleague for so many years at Wimbledon, Arthur Ashe. 
Meanwhile, it's highly unusual for a heavyweight champion to be defending his title less than three months after having won it. It's more unusual still for him to do so in a big public arena like Madison Square Garden as opposed to in a casino hotel. But Riddick Bowe is an unusual guy. And tonight, together, you along with us are the beneficiaries of his unique desire to bring the title home to New York and defend it in front of his Brooklyn friends and family. Here with me, as always, is HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. Larry, a heavyweight championship fight in the Garden must take you back to your days as a fledgling sports writer. Well, yes, Jim. If Riddick Bowe dreamed of fighting here when I was a boy, I had dreamed of covering heavyweight championship fights here. And in fact, I've covered all previous nine heavyweight championship fights here in this Madison Square Garden. I, I feel somehow that I'm in a kind of time machine. I don't think I've ever covered a fight in which the building, the arena, is the star or at least the co-star. And what could be sweeter for any fighter? than to come home as a champion, the heavyweight champion of the world, to come home to Madison Square Garden, which was once the center of the boxing uniform universe, and to come home to face a fighter who is supposed to make this a happy homecoming. We've seen in the past where homecomings can turn against a fighter. Too much pressure, too many distractions. I don't think that Riddick Bowe is that kind of a kid. I think he turns these potential negatives to positives to, and even if he does have a letdown after the fight of his life to win the title just less than three months ago I don't think this crowd will let him let down he'll feed off of it well some would say after the weigh-in two days ago that he must have been feeding off of just about everything he's seen for the last couple of months Bo and Dokes together tip the scales at an aggregate 487 pounds 243 for the champ 244 for the challenger making them with their collective weight the second largest heavyweight championship entity ever in the ring at the same time they got to within 28 ounces of the record established by primo carnera and paulino usadun oh 60 years ago in 1933 and if you're doing a little math at home you now know that if our George Foreman gets the chance he covets to challenge Riddick Bowe they will rewrite the record book in that particular category right George there'd be no more hamburgers for me no, I don't absolutely. want to be in that record book oh you want to dance in on twinkle toes well a lot of people wonder about the first heavyweight championship defense your identity has changed as a human being uh, despite the fact that Dokes isn't seen as much of an opponent for Riddick tonight, are there some mental challenges for Riddick and trainer Eddie Futch that haven't existed before? For the first time in his life, he's going to be introduced now before a fight as the heavyweight champ of the world. There's a lot of power, a lot of strength, and a lot of disappointment can go along with that, and a guy shakes in his bones when he hears it for the first time. So they got to be worried about that. Nobody expects him to be shaking in his bones at the sight of Michael Dokes, who seems to have treated this casually, eating big meals of linguine and shrimp earlier this week. People think he had a beer watching a basketball game here at the Garden the other night. Is there any chance Dokes can put up a credible challenge? Now, there are two Michael Dokes. The, the street smart guy like we all were who would do anything for a dollar, who may just show up here strictly motivated by $700,000 plus. Then there's the other who could be overlooked like uh, years ago when two-ton Tony Galento was mo uh, promoted as the beer drinker, fat guy who couldn't do anything. And he almost mopped the floor with the great Joe Lewis. So two things can happen tonight. I kind of lean toward uh, two-ton. Uh-huh, I got you. Well, it's already been a night of the unusual here. Ray Mercer appears out of the championship picture after having been beaten by Jesse Ferguson. Here now, the latest close-up look at Riddick Bowe. I told him, these people seem to have uh, great joy in putting you down. But you're going to hear this commentary all the way into the throne room. Your answer is to be a winner. And new heavyweight champion of the world. On the night of uh, November 13th, I uh, set the record straight. I got the sense of satisfaction. Not so much that we proved everybody wrong, not even so much that Riddick won the title, but that collectively we did the very 
best we could. Please welcome the new champ, Riddick, Big Daddy, Bo. The Brooklyn Zone, Riddick Bo. Riddick! The heavyweight champ, Riddick Bo. Their victorious rise to superstardom is anything but a dream. But for Newman and Bo, reality may take some adjustment. It's not as if they didn't have any warning. Ivana Holyfield warned me after the fight, and I thought um, he was uh, exaggerating a bit much, but I see now that he wasn't. It is very hectic. It is very busy. I'm looking for the formula to try to learn how to turn it off. But right now, I haven't found that yet. The legendary trainer, Eddie Futch, has been this route before. It's usually another day at the office for me. <laughs> If they had to sum it up, they'd probably all agree with Rock when he says, I'd rather be here being busy than uh, trying to get here being busy. OK, just tell me the bottom line. The FAN is going to be flooded. Hi, Chan Rock Newman. Hey, how you doing? OK. I, I don't mind you being specific, because that's how I like to be, too. Oh, man, I, I said, hey, you can't go to the garden on a Saturday night. God, people are gone home. It's free on HBO. So don't come up with this later day list of concerns that, you know, is just going to begin to try to screw up the deal. The, the gentleman from England, I forgot his name. Lennox Lewis. Yeah. When are we going to, when is Riddick going to take a shot at him? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> On that subject, Newman can be persuaded to offer his uh -huh. explanation. We made very legitimate offers, and uh, Lennox Lewis and his people decided to, uh, sidestep the opportunity to fight Riddick in exchange for stepping into a garbage can and, and picking up a, uh, a belt that was uh, worthy of only the garbage can. And what I'm trying to say is that I have no interest in the WBC belt. But without the third belt, does that mean that Riddick Bow is still the undisputed heavyweight champion in the eyes of the public? As Riddick more eloquently put it than me, he beat the man that beat the man that beat the man and unquestionably that makes me the man. Anybody else claiming to be the heavyweight champion in the world is, is, uh, is bogus, a paper champion. You have to beat me in order to call yourself the champion. Still adjusting to the chaos of their new celebrity, this team plans to hang around for a while. And for all the doubting Thomases who said they'd never get here, a philosophy which is simple and unarguable. Just keep winning, and they'll have to get on board. <laughs> Success is the best revenge. And our best revenge is to bring you back here live to Madison Square Garden, where coming up very shortly, the live heavyweight championship fight, Riddick Bowe defending his two championship belts, courtesy of the IBF and the WBA, against one-time WBA world heavyweight champion Michael Dokes. He won it on a first-round knockout of Mike Weaver 11 years ago. For more thoughts on Michael Dokes, Riddick Bowe, and their prospects tonight, we take you back to HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. Appropriately, Riddick Bow trained for this fight at a hotel that specializes in honeymooners. Appropriately, because this is the honeymoon for Riddick Bow. That blissful time when everyone loves you. And nobody even much minds that you have a, an opponent who is considered to be a setup. But no matter what we think of this fight, no matter what Riddick Bow thinks of this fight, inevitably, if he wants to be the popular champion he says he wants to be, it all starts here. If he wants to show that he is as devastating and distinctive inside the ring as he is likable and appealing outside of the ring, it starts now. The presumed setup might have something to say about that. The presumed setup, of course, is Michael Dokes. Michael Dokes. I'm reminded of what the manager of another underdog fighter in a challenge for the heavyweight championship fight once said. Hey, the whole world is a mismatch. Or have you seen a Super Bowl lately? Michael Dokes has been this way before. I had no control then. I was out of control. He'd buy cocaine uh, like your Aunt Nellie would buy pinto beans. The problem was Michael Dokes, the addict. The first time I encountered Michael Dokes was back in uh, October, October 6th of 1986. 
On that day, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department carried out a search warrant at his house and found approximately eight and a half ounces of cocaine. Drug usage is only 10% of the problem. The other 90% is guilt or resentment or anger or jealousy. About April 13th of 1987, he was arrested right over here uh, down by uh, Vegas World uh, for driving while under the influence of cocaine. He spent approximately a month in jail on that occasion. Drugs were just a, a way for me to, to, to numb myself to what I really didn't want to feel or what I didn't like feeling. Michael Dokes was only 24 years old when he used his blazing hand speed to pummel Mike Weaver and win the WBA heavyweight title. His prospects seemed brilliant, but less than 10 months later, under the influence of cocaine, Dokes was flattened by Harry Cotsia. Dokes subsequently embarked on a binge of drug consumption so rampant, it put him out of action for almost three years. He'd buy uh, three or four months or six months supply at a time, invite a, a bunch of his friends over, mostly women, in fact, some very attractive women, and would party hardy with uh, these folks uh, with the cocaine that he had. By the end of 1987, after several arrests and failed rehabilitations, a strung out dokes finally confronted reality. The story wasn't pulled in like it did. I felt uh, personally that I had too much talent uh, to really uh, stop completely like that and just throw my, my, my future away like that. Mike said he started to feel good about himself. He said, you know, I feel pretty good, you know. Uh, I think I may want to do it again. The worn out 290 pound Michael Dokes lost weight, kept himself clean, beat up on a series of inferior opponents, and finally landed a big match against Evander Holyfield in 1989. Though Dokes didn't win, what he did do that night in standing up to Holyfield for 10 brutal rounds stunned the boxing world. I just couldn't believe watching that fight from the corner. I... <laughs> Watching the fight from the corner that night, I said to myself, my God. And it made you think if he never had the problems that he had, what he could have really been. In the movies, the script would have ended after the Holyfield fight, with our fallen hero having triumphantly redeemed himself against all odds. But in the real life version, Michael Dokes has continued to face the lure of the boxing ring and the demons of drug addiction. Now, nearly 10 years after having lost his title belt, Dokes is back again for one last shot. His once formidable physical skills clearly eroded by the ravages of time and substance abuse. Everything we do, we lose a little bit. But with everything we lose, we gain something too. And as long as you can get something from what you lost or, or to try to make the best of the bad situation, it's something that you can't put your hand on, you can't see, but uh, it's something with inside of you. And, uh, uh, I, 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 um, I attained that uh, through my problems and, and working back to the top. Against Riddick Bowe, the odds against Michael Dokes are stacked high. He can only hope the wisdom he has acquired in dealing with his problems outside the ring will enable him to somehow overcome a much younger, much faster fighter inside the ropes. Well, he might never have expected to find himself in these circumstances again. But boxing, not just in the ring, maybe even to a greater degree outside the ring, is the theater of the unexpected, as Larry Merchant has labeled it in the past. And in an unexpected circumstance, Michael Dokes now attempts to join the illustrious list of those to have lost and then regained heavyweight championships in their careers. You could say that Michael Dokes is fortunate to be in this unfortunate situation. He can make nearly a million dollars depending on the final purse count here. Well, if you were being generous, you would say that he has treated it philosophically. The cynic might say that he has treated it casually. What's worrying to a lot of the media is that he didn't train hardly at all over the last five or six days. He says that he was stale. He wanted to get the bounce back in his legs. We have to wonder whether he is whistling and praying in the dark. He came to New York about a week ago after having trained 
at the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas, sparred for four rounds in a gym on Monday, and then said, okay, that's it. Went out and had a big meal of linguine and scampi, a meal he repeated several times here in New York, and never went back to the gym again. The record for Michael Dokes, 55 times in the professional prize ring, 50 wins, the losses to Kutsia, Holyfield, and Ruddock, two draws. He has had 32 knockouts himself. Punching power was never his strong suit. His biggest asset at his peak was hand speed. And now to face the 244-pound Michael Dokes. Here with his two championship belts preceding him comes 243-pound Riddick Bowe. Again, we mentioned quite unusual in this day and age for a heavyweight champion to be defending the title less than three months after having won it. Of course, there was talk for a while of a fight on Super Bowl Sunday to take place at halftime of the Super Bowl game. Eventually, he opted for a long-term deal with HBO, and this is the first step along that road. He really seems to be a, an, an anomaly as a fighter. Uh, usually aggressive fighters have aggressive personalities outside the ring. But he's a sweetheart outside the ring. And now Riddick Bowe enters the arena where he can be seen by the thousands and thousands of ticket holders who seem at least to have bought tickets to this fight largely on the basis of Bo's personal charm. Call it his charisma, his magnetism. I believe at this moment it exceeds even what was expected by his manager and biggest supporter, Rock Newman. And also there is a kind of, of uh, mass nostalgia going on in New York. W wanting to will a heavyweight championship fight back into the into the present when it was so much a part of the city's past. Bo and his manager Newman even agreed when ticket sales greatly exceeded expectations to cut Michael Dokes in for more money than his original guarantee of 750,000. And George Foreman, that is unusual to say the least. Never seen before, not in this business. And a credit to Rock Newman for doing that when he didn't have to. And there's the record for Riddick Bowe, 32 wins, 27 knockouts, of course. He did not get a knockout in the epic 12-round battle in which he won the championship via unanimous decision from Evander Holyfield on November 13. And of course, the familiar figure of 81-year-old Eddie Futch in the ring with Bo less than two weeks ago, he was hospitalized for what was regarded by his doctors as a serious coronary incident. His cardiologist originally asked him not to come here tonight, and Futch said, nope, this is my man. This is his first defense, Doc. You and I are going to have to work out a way for me to be there. And Eddie, I think, appreciates that Bo could be a little nervous, try a little too hard in his first defense, and that's why he has stressed it so much. Eddie Futch, who is in Joe Fraser's corner on that memorable night when he fought Muhammad Ali, 22 years ago. All right, let's look at the tail of the tape. We've already told you about the waistlines of the two dirigibles. There's a nine-year age difference in Bo's favor. He also has a couple of inches in height and three or four inches in reach as part of his physical advantages going into the ring tonight against Michael Dokes. Punch Eight. that numbers, Larry. Eight pounds more, incidentally, for Bo than in his uh, championship fight. But he says, I'm in good enough shape to beat Dokes. And here are some of our punch numbers. We can see how accurate Riddick Bo is, landing 50% of his punches. But Michael Dokes used to land a very high percentage. He doesn't anymore. There we can see how many jabs Bo throws. That's a lot of jabs. Michael Dokes doesn't use the jab hardly at all. Rules, Harold Letterman. 
Riddick Bowe and Michael Dokes will fight tonight using a combination of rules of the International Boxing Federation and the New York State Athletic Commission. 12 rounds, and for the first time in the heavyweight championship, the standing eight count is in effect. No three knockdown rule. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight. And Jim, if a butt occurs and the fight doesn't go six rounds, it's a technical draw. After that, we go to the scorecards. First Jim, time ever that the standing eight count has ever. been in effect for a heavyweight championship fight. All right, thank you very much, Harold Letterman. Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Ed Darian for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like to ask the fans here at Madison Square Garden to kindly rise. We received the sad note just minutes ago, the passing of a great legend, a legend in the tennis world. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the passing of the late, great Arthur Ashe. At this time, our timekeeper de Bell, Cecilio Tito Pedraja, will have the final 10 count for the late, great Arthur Ashe. Thank you. We're live here in the Big Apple, Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena, as Spencer Promotions, Madison Square Garden Boxing, and Main hey, Events hey, Monitor. Hey. In association with Caesar's Word, Come on, Mike. proudly present the homecoming, you the heavyweight championship of the world, and is approved by the New York State Athletic Commission, the Honorable Randy Gordon Chairman, Rose Trentman, and Herb Washington Commissioners, is sanctioned by the IBF, the Honorable Robert W. Lee President, Ms. Marion Muhammad. The supervisor in charge at ringside is also sanctioned by the WBA, Hilberto Mendoza, its president. The Honorable James J. Bins, the supervisor in charge in attendance at ringside. The chief physician in attendance at ringside this evening is Dr. Barry Jordan, along with his two fine colleagues, Dr. Billy Lathan and Dr. Rufus Sadler. The timekeeper to bell is Cecilio Tito Pedraja. Counting for the knockdowns is Wayne Kelly. The judges, Don Ackerman from Oneida, New York, Sheila Martin from Norfolk, Virginia, and Luis Rivera from New York City. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 12-round title bout and refereeing his 51st World Championship bout, referee Joe Santarpia. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First, in the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with the white trim. He tipped in at an even 244 pounds. Professionally, he has 50 wins, three losses, two draws, with 32 knockouts. He is ranked currently number eight by the WBA and number 11 by the IBF. All the way from Las Vegas, Nevada, the former WBA heavyweight champion of the world, Michael Dynamite Dokes. Dokes. And his opponent in the red corner, wearing the white trunks with the red trim. He weighed in at an even 243 pounds. This young man is undefeated in 32 pro bouts with 27 knockouts. He is the IBF and WBA heavyweight champion of the world from Brooklyn, New York, 
Here he is, Riddick, Big Daddy Bo. Bo. Gentlemen, you're boxing for the heavyweight championship of the world. You both know the rules. Are there any questions at this time? I want a good, clean fight, no, and I want you to vote. protect yourself at all times. Shake hands now, and God bless you both. We've seen Dokes a number of times, guys, in which he goes out and shoots his bolt early and see if, sees if he can't intimidate or put off his opponent. I'm sure that Riddick Bow is ready for that. He wasn't ready when Evander Holyfield came straight at him in the first round. He knows what Dokes likes to do. On the other hand, George Foreman, uh, Dokes appears to have worked up a nice sweat warming up in the locker room, and Riddick Bow is bone dry in the upper body. Michael Dokes is doing the street thing, too. He's sitting watching this guy staring at him, playing little major mind tricks that may be effective to get him past the second round. The crowd a little bit quieter than we might have expected at the beginning of the fight. I would attribute that to the surprise announcement regarding the death of Arthur Ashe. Round one begins with Bo throwing the jab. And many people regard that as most effective weapon. Some say it's the right uppercut. Others would vote for the jab. It's strange with Rick Bo, he throws a good effective left jab, but he's almost jumping backwards as though he doesn't want to put a lot of power on it. Dokes slapping with the left, landing three left hooks to the side of Bo's face. Bo sticking the jab and landing virtually all of them early against Michael Dokes. Dokes has upper body movement, but not head movement, George. He's a stationary target. Yeah, he's dependent strictly on his quick hands, not his quick head or quick feet. And uh, Rick Bo can really take advantage of this. And Rick Bo has given this old pro too much time to stand around and think. Now Bo snapping Dokes' head back again with the jab. Tries to land the right hand and lands a short right inside. Dokes is stunned. And Bo is takes the left hook. Bo is stunned by left hook. That's right. Riddick missing with the big right hand. Dokes. And down goes Dokes. Dokes into the ropes. Well, I don't think Dokes went all the way down, but the referee wants to give him what will amount to the first standing eight count. That was a very, very fast call. It was Dokes who decided to go out there and fight early like that, though. Wasn't Bo's idea. Short left hand inside by Bo. More than a minute to go in the round. Plenty of time for Bo to close it out. If he can keep Dokes in trouble, Dokes lands another left hook, but takes a right in return. Dokes virtually out on his feet. Is he going to stop it? Yes, right. he does. With 41 seconds still to go in the round, and now Michael Dokes is furious. And Dokes' advisors jump into the ring and begin to state their case, and it was a pretty quick stoppage, even though you say you're surprised, George. I'm surprised that he didn't stop it a little earlier. The guy was taking too much punishment. There wasn't a chance he was going to get a knockout out of it to pay him back. No way. He should have But he had the landed the two solid left hooks yeah, in return. He was in no shape to continue in that round. This guy came out for a first round knockout. He was accurate. And he was going to get it. Well, my own personal opinion is that he was in no shape to come into the ring in the first place. Larry? Well, it's a heavyweight championship fight. Um, the crowd is very, very upset. This is not going to win Bo a lot of friends even though everybody was expecting, as we call it, that this is or was a setup. You can't quarrel with the referee. Remember that when M Michael Dokes won the title, it was also on a quick stoppage in about a minute of one round in which everybody thought that was too fast. But you can't, the referee gave him every chance. He gave him one stand and eight count. He even applauded to give him the second stand, uh, eight count. Uh, so My man was ready the referee to fight. was That's more cool. than generous. Take the gloves off. Take the gloves off. 
Well, we'll take another look at Dokes getting hurt early. Now, remember, referee Joe Santarpia is the man watching this at close range. Bo was hitting, was hitting Dokes with jabs, straight jabs, hurting him. Dokes, as I said earlier, was going to try to make something happen. He, that big right hand wobbled him, shook him up, and that's what started it. But he was there to be hit for a long-arm fighter. The champion is very good at close quarters. This night he looked indestructible. I mean, it was, it was like the champion of the world that he is. All right, there's Santarpia stopping the bout. Now, previously, you had seen the sequence in which Dokes reeled into the ropes, appeared headed down to the canvas, Santarpia stepped in and top, stopped the action, and Dokes never actually went down. Well, Dokes spent the week sleeping, and he continued sleeping right here in this fight. The referee was more than generous. He, he, he allowed him the chance to recuperate, not giving the eight count again, so it was a fair fight. He won. He really won fair and square. But of course, there are going to be some fans, George, who'll say, hey, wait a minute. We never saw him hit the canvas. How could the fight have been stopped in two minutes, 20 seconds? Yeah, I mean, and those fans are uh, strictly the ones who don't understand boxing. This guy is so big and powerful. All right, let's go up to ring announcer Ed Darian for the official particulars. Asilio. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Joe Santarpia stops this bout at two minutes and 18 seconds of the first round and a winner by a TKO and still the heavyweight champion of the world Riddick Big Daddy Bo Bo well the questions are now going to come who comes next and as Jim mentioned earlier, Ray Mercer, who was supposed to be next for Riddick Bowe and might have also gone in about two minutes and 40 seconds or 20 seconds, is no longer in the picture. And we'll be talking to everybody about what Riddick Bowe's plans are next. Some people are guessing Evander Holyfield. Championship belts over his shoulder. And in a moment, we will expect that Riddick will come down to ringside where we'll get a chance to talk to him. I guess Dokes is probably going to have plenty to say about this as well. Billy Crystal is in the building. He wants a fight. George Foreman, one more time, just state clearly the case for why this was a good stoppage despite the fact that Michael Dokes had not hit the canvas. Dokes went in to start a fight too quick. He started getting hurt earlier. The referee gave him one stand and eight count. He should have done it twice, but he gave him a chance to recuperate. It didn't pay off. Huh? You get right here. Go ahead. The champion now standing on the ring apron, showing off the belt. The attendance was 16,332. That's regarded as astonishing, given the fact that the fight was televised live here in New York on HBO. And the live gate, $1,603,000 plus, sets a record for a Madison Square Garden event. And now, joining us at ringside is the champion, and Riddick, let's get started. Uh, we'll wait for the camera shot to change, and here we are. Congratulations. Uh, did you have a feeling coming into the fight that you were going to be able to get something done quite this quickly? Oh, just yes, definitely. You remember I told you guys yesterday, I wasn't playing with this guy. I was coming in to, to bang him, and I knew he would be there. I guess that this tells us that 243 pounds, at least in this circumstance, was no problem whatsoever. Oh, not at all. And I would like to thank Mike Tyson for... The words of wisdom he gave me, and uh, I'm going to take him on his advice, and I, I thank you, Mike. Mike Tyson, who made a derisive comment about your weight and said that you were, quote, obese. Now, you dedicated your victory over Holyfield to Mike Tyson. Are you now upset at Mike for having said what he said? Oh, not at all. I think um, what he said had a lot of truth to it, and um, I owe it to the American people and the public to stay in great shape, and that's what I'll do. So you're saying that with a totally straight face. Are you disappointed? that Michael Dokes is going to be seen by a lot of people not to have been in any shape whatsoever to be here tonight. Oh, not at all. You got to look at it like this in this aspect. I train hard. When these guys step into the ring, they're supposed to be in great shape, and 
you know, what can I say? If he wasn't, that, that's his fault. All right, you were connecting early with the jab. You hit him with a short right hand inside and then a short left hook inside. From that point on, it seemed to be only a matter of time. Was there any one punch you were looking to try to take him out with? I think I got a little over anxious and I wanted to load it with the right hand. But other than that, uh, things went pretty much as I anticipated. One thing that didn't go as you anticipated is the earlier bout this evening between Ray Mercer and Jesse Ferguson. Now, there had been an expectation that you were going to fight Mercer in May. And Mercer got taken to a clinic tonight by a superior boxing job on the part of Jesse Ferguson. Well, that was a dumb move by Mercer. We told him earlier to take another fight and that Jesse Ferguson might prove to be very difficult. And again, Jesse came in, he was ready to fight, and that's the difference. Jesse Ferguson was determined. I don't think Ray Mercer was in great shape. And so uh, he was able to pull out a decision. Well, this changes the schedule for Riddick Bowe, and some people are speculating that it moves Holyfield up in the rotation toward a rematch. What's your thought about that? Well, let me say this. I think Holyfield is a, is a great guy, and I think a guy like Evander would always bring the best out of me, so I would welcome that fight. Riddick, congratulations again. All right. Hi, Mom. Eddie Futch, he took care of your heart tonight. Absolutely no anxious moments, right? No anxious moments. And I didn't have to climb those stairs uh, but once. All right. Hey, Riddick, come back. One question. Since you tossed the WBC championship belt into a garbage can on December 14th, it appears to have become the plan for you and your manager, Rock Newman, to freeze out the World Boxing Council and try to eliminate them from the picture as a meaningful governing body in boxing. Now, does that mean that as long as that man, Lennox Lewis, sees himself as the WBC champion and tries to do business with that belt, that there's a chance that you would never bring him into the ring to defend your titles against him? Not maybe. There's no chance whatsoever. As long as he recognizes WBC, we can't fight. So if Lennox Lewis chooses to remain the WBC world champion and successfully defends that belt, then you are never going to go in the ring with him. That is correct. I'm the world heavyweight champion of the world. And if he wants to be a bogus champion and a top cat, then that's on him. I think the American people and everybody here know who the real champion is. Well, but what about the people who are going to want to see that fight just because they think of him as your primary opposition? Well, it's unfortunate that Lennox uh, is holding on to that belt. If he really feels like he can beat me and wants to be a real champion, then he needs to re uh, renounce the WBC, come on and take these two belts. So what you're really gambling on is that you can create the leverage necessary to make him renounce the WBC belt as a condition for coming to fight you? Well, I think the WBC is an unfair organization. As I told you the other day, that Don King will dictate to Lennox Lewis now, and it's already started. Everybody at Lennox Lewis has to fight in the WBC are Don King fighters. So you're at war with, with the WBC and Don There's King? one champion. And if, only, if, and if uh, Lennox Lewis happens to go the distance, he will not win. Simple as that. Against? Anybody in the WBC. Including Tony Tucker. That's right. So you're saying if Tony Tucker goes 12 rounds with Lennox Lewis, he'll become the champion of the tell WBC. You something. If Lennox Lewis hits him on the chin, they might call it a low blow. <laughs> <laughs> Rock Newman, the manager of uh, Riddick Bow and the chief business maker in the division right now. Ray Mercer took a bad turn tonight against Jesse Ferguson. What does that mean for your May fight prospects? That means that uh, Riddick won't be fighting Mercer in May, I don't think. Uh, I've already gotten a call here at the uh, stadium tonight from MC Hammer representing Evander Holyfield. Uh, there's Tommy Morrison out there. There's Big George Foreman. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll take a, we had a press conference scheduled for Monday. At least we'll be going home a day early now. Are you confident the public will stick with you if you refuse to fight Lennox Lewis for a long time because of his decision to remain the WBC champ? Well, you must get something right first. We offered Lennox the opportunity to fight Riddick. Never said you didn't. He is the one who declined that. So the question is, why is he acting in a cowardly way? We gave him the offer. If he and his people are confident that he could beat Riddick Big Daddy Bo, he should have accepted the offer. He's the one that is running. He ran and hid behind the WBC and that garbage can belt. Didn't answer my question. Are you confident the public will stick with you if you take this course of action? This guy is a rising star that the public has fallen in love with. You see this full house here tonight. They will stay with him. They know there is one champion in the heavyweight division, and that is Riddick Big Daddy Bo. Thank you, Rock. Thank you, Riddick. Thank you, Eddie. Let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring. All right, Joe, would you tell us how you saw what was happening in the ring? Well, at the beginning of the round, you saw the fight come out right away that uh, Bo took, a, uh, took the fight two dokes, and he hit him a couple of times, he put him in the ropes there, and the only thing that held him up was the ropes, but it was scored as a knockdown. That was scored as a knockdown when I gave him the eight count. So you thought that he would have been knocked down except for the, the ropes? ropes. The ropes saved him. 
He was hurt then. He stopped walling across the ring, got in the corner over here, and he must have got hit with about 20 punches before I decided to jump in. He was hurt, definitely hurt, and my job is to make sure that the fellas don't get hurt. Thank you very much. You're sir. welcome. Jim? All right. Thank you very much, Larry. And uh, now with the Beau entourage having passed by, we bring George Foreman back in. George, we're going to get another chance to look at the first round. And uh, one question on the part of a lot of people is going to be, did Riddick prove anything against obviously quite limited opposition? Did he prove anything? Yeah, he won that fight. You don't worry about your critics in boxing. That's for the movie stars. You win and you go home with your money and you count the scars that you don't have. The referee did a fine job. I'm happy about the way he handled that fight. Dokes was ready. Don't fool yourself. He couldn't have taken those hard punches unless he had been in shape. But he just couldn't come back against a motivated Riddick Bow. All right, let's go back to Larry with Michael Dokes and hear his side of the story. Larry? All right, Michael, give us your side of the story. How aware were you? Were you really able to fight back in your judgment? Well, Larry, I know you've been sort of a ass to people before, but you can't look me in my eye and honestly tell me that you thought I was in court hand or incompetent to continue that fight. Look me in my eye. I'm looking in your eye. I think the fight could have gone on, but yeah, it, exactly. Yeah, That's the wait bottom a minute. Line. Wait, That's but, the bottom line. But, but at the same time, the referee felt that, that my, you were wobbled and that I, you had I, taken a lot of okay. unanswered punches. And one other I, thing, I, one other thing, Michael. You won the title in one minute on a fight that a lot of other people thought was a fast stoppage. It's part of the game, isn't it? And they made it mandatory well, that they had to return the match, too. Uh, regardless if it's, it's a fair game or not, I had to defend my title again against Mike Weaver Absolutely. on that 63 title defense, 63 right. seconds title defense, which was tainted from that point on. You know what I'm saying? If they want to serve me purpose, my purpose is correct. Give me another defense. I, I, I'm looking at the ref. I'm looking at Riddick Bow. Sure, he might have fought a couple where of where was None of was close. Where, did you feel th th in the er, in the first knockdown? The st he well, didn't knock me down. Well, I wanted to ask he you that. Me. What did the ropes hold you up? He ruled no, that he the ropes. Me. Hey, if I hit you on the chin, I don't care if ropes are there, or steel beam is there, or are you wedged in by nails? Your legs is gonna leave you. Regardless of the rope, my legs would leave me. The man I, went into uh, the rope. I and, wonder, and in the room, I'm wondering what the referee is talking about. What, what, is, what is he specifically uh, pointing out to me or to you or to anybody else? Do so you think that he is anticipating because there's a big young champion against an older challenger that in anticipation of what might happen that he stopped it? Anticipation of what? Ain't nothing. No, no, no. I what he's talking it. about, Mike, is the fight that they already had planned, plans that they had you made. Talking about with uh, What are you talking about? In terms of Mercer, or are you talking about the, the, the thing that may have happened? To me? Please let me go on one knee. We're fighting for the heavyweight See, championship of the world, Larry. All right, thank Jim you, Michael. Andy We've got Jim. your side of the story. We appreciate it. All right, Jim. Okay, thanks very much, Larry. And now, George, let's you and I look back at the two minutes, 20 seconds or so of first round action. And we'll start from the beginning as Riddick Bowe came out throwing the jab against a maybe too aggressive Michael Dokes. You know, that, that jab sort of hurts the backbone a bit when you jerk the head back like that. So he was setting him up for some shots that would really knock him down. In control of the fight, landing the punches he wants. Michael Dokes is only reacting to what he does first. And I'm surprised that Michael Dokes would even, even want to instigate a fight with this big man until it's about four or five rounds gone. Well, I don't think he would have had the legs to stay away, George. That's true. You know, I'm just not sure that Michael Dokes had many options coming in here tonight. And to his credit, he at least made an honest man of himself in the sense that he didn't make a charade of trying to run when he couldn't have done it. Really, Bo is doing a fine job with the left jab. I mean, this guy was just a sitting duck for his left jab, which does more damage than the right hand punches early in the fight. Larry Merchant rejoining us now at ringside. We're about a minute into round number one, Larry. Now coming up is the sequence in which Bo will drive Dokes into the ropes. The referee stops the action and 
Dokes never goes down, so it's not, in effect, a knockdown, although the referee may have ruled it as such. I don't think he ever gave a count. I don't think he gave a knockdown count or a standing count. See there, Santarpia stops the action. Now when he turns back to Dokes, he says two, and now he begins talking to it. I think the count, such as it was, ended at about two, and from that point on, it was just a matter of talking to Dokes till he brought him back. And you know something, the referee, like I said earlier, could have went in about right now and gave him another standing eight count, but he was really kind to Dokes and gave him a chance to get yourself together. I'm not gonna shame you, and Dokes couldn't do it. You see, he omitted the eight standing eight count. The referee did a fine job. He gave him every chance he could. Now this is the point at which Bo said that he thought he was a little too anxious and trying too hard for the knockout. But he lands enough blows. You can see that a referee is giving him every chance in the world, but you can't stand with a big guy like Riddick Bowen and let him beat on a guy who's 21 years old like that. All right, so there, the Santarpia stoppage and the end of the fight, about two minutes, 20 seconds in. Okay, gentlemen, let's take a look back at something else that happened here earlier this evening. We have been talking about Ray Mercer. We'll get to that in just a moment. Any final comments about Bo and the uh, Dokes? Uh, I can tell you that Riddick Bo is uh, doing a good job so far. I'd like to see what he's got tomorrow against a guy whose legs are there. He says that you move up in the rotation of contenders possibly tonight. That make you feel good? Billy Crystal's in the room, and he's told me he's going to be the next attraction at Madison Square Garden. Mr. Saturday Night himself. Mr. Straight Answer, George <laughs> Foreman. Your final comments about Bo and Dokes, Larry. Um, well, I think the final comment was, was really made by the referee with his action. Uh, we said this was a setup supposed to be a happy homecoming, and I suppose it is a happy homecoming for the champion, but I think the, the folks out here feel more than a little bit cheated that the fight became an anti-climax considering the hopes that were invested in the return of a heavyweight championship fight to the Garden. They were cheated from the beginning. Michael Dokes was not a legitimate opponent for a heavyweight championship fight in my personal estimation. Nor would Ray Mercer have been in May based on what we saw of him earlier tonight. We'll take a look back at some highlights of Mercer's ignominious loss to journeyman sparring partner type Jesse Ferguson, a fight in which in our personal estimation at ringside, Ray Mercer may not have won a round. Here's a look at round seven action, and George, with superior technical skills, Jesse Ferguson simply dominated the fight. That's right. This guy had been a professional sparring partner for years. He's worked with some of the best fighters in the world. He knows how to take a shot, rest for a while, and whip him, and really, uh, evidently, uh, this guy didn't believe that. Jesse Ferguson pulled it out in grand fashion. He whipped him. You know, the story here, uh, Jim and George, is that you know, Ray, this is the second time that Ray, that Ray Mercer has blown a chance to fight for the heavyweight championship. Ray Mercer, I still believe that uh, this guy can really come back and give uh, Riddick Bo a better fight than people would expect. In a little bit. You know, I, was, I, I got in there, you know, I worked on a lot of things I want to work on. You know, tonight, uh, you know, things just didn't go my way. Uh, I'm still a positive fighter. I'll fight anybody. Hard. I mean, uh, Jesse, he trained, he trained hard. I had three weeks to fight this fight. Uh, not making no excuses, but I'll be ready to fight tomorrow. There you go. You're suggesting that, A, you might not have been in your best shape, and B, instead of just fighting to win, you were trying stuff that you might be trying on Riddick Bowe. Well, you know, maybe I looked a little past. You know, that's a lesson to learn, you know, for young boxers like myself. Uh, you know, I'm going to do I'm not a quitter. I'm staying in there, and I'm ready to go. What is your true feelings about having blown this opportunity? Uh, I could be heavyweight champion of the world, man. I mean, this happens to the best. Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, all of them lose. They all come back. George Foreman's still in there. So, hey, he's my inspiration. They come back. That's all. I just lost the fight. All right, Larry, complete your point about this being the second time that Mercer has blown a shot at the title. Well, he had a chance to fight Evander Holyfield. If he beat Larry Holmes, everybody thought he would. Larry Holmes beat him easily. He lost here again. If he hadn't been an Olympic champion, Ray Mercer would be back in the pack. He doesn't have the skills to be a top flight heavyweight. He's been advanced and promoted because of the gold medal he won at the Olympics. He's really not qualified, but of course neither was Michael Dokes and strange things happen. But a combination of this one-sided defeat of Dokes and of Mercer losing by one-sided will mean that everybody's gonna have to reevaluate who the next opponents are going to be, that the fans may not stand for this kind of an opponent 
and that uh, Riddick Bowe is going to have to find, fight the people who are a little bit more substantial and who have a little better shot to beat him. And that eventually he's going to have to fight Lennox Lewis, no, what he, no matter what he says. I, you cannot be accepted as a true heavyweight champion, in my judgment, unless everybody out there in the world, not even the big boxing fans, understand that here is a heavyweight champion who's willing to fight anybody, who wants to fight anybody. Beneath the menace of Mike Tyson, between, beneath the bombast of Muhammad Ali, what everybody understood about them was... They were willing to knock hey, off the toughest man in the room. The toughest guy, let's go. That's right. Let's go right now, let's go next. Back to you and for another subject. Riddick, <clears throat> Riddick's got to be that. I know. Right. I'll come back to you for another subject in just a moment. First, let's press George. George, I'm going to try this one more time. Is it your plan to go ahead with the plan to fight Tommy Morrison and then to look for a title shot against Bo? Is it your plan to press forward toward a title shot with Lewis? Is it your plan to take advantage of the opportunity that might exist against Bo if that comes up in the next couple months? What do you think? Uh, this all is on the back of uh, uh, Bob Arum now. This guy is the promoter that's pretty much guided George Foreman and picking matches right now. This guy sit down and say, look, we better do this. Then I'm going to sit there and be subjective for a change. Although I do believe Ray Mercer would do a lot better against Riddick Bowe than his last opponent. And he shouldn't be counted out the picture on that performance. Who would he, buy tickets for that after tonight? Who I'd would buy, buy the tickets? hot dogs. I'd buy the hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, well, we know you'd buy the hot dogs. Got to talk about the tickets. One more time with you. Are you going to follow through on the supposed contractual plan to fight Tommy Morrison? Yeah, any fight that I go through with right now would have to come through Bob Arum. I mean, that's just the way it goes. So you really have to sit and chat with him. Bob Arum. I'm right here tonight as a journalist right now, and a guy who's hot Bob Arum doesn't get in the ring and fight. Are you going to get in the ring with Tommy Morrison? <laughs> what do you say, Bob? All right, fine. Okay, I understand. We're not going to get an answer. Enough about boxing for just a moment. Final comments from you, Larry, on. Uh, on the death of our very close friend and uh, Wimbledon colleague, Arthur Ashe. Well, I was, I was thinking that Madison Square Garden in the old days existed as the center of this universe. Um, when people talked about class, Joe DiMaggio had class, Sugar Ray Robinson had class, and Arthur Ashe was one of those kinds of people. He, he, he was a man and a man of substance. And that's very rare among, among athletes who have to have single-mindedness to get to the top of their games. What everyone will remember about Arthur Ashe, besides his dignity and, and his eloquence and his gentility, was the match that he beat Jimmy Connors at Wimbledon when he was past his prime and he simply outsmarted the younger Jimmy Connors. A match I will remember is that at the second U.S. Open, I believe, after Arthur Ashe won the first U.S. Open, he was playing John Newcomb in the semifinals, and at a crucial point in the fourth set, there was a missed call by the referee. Arthur Ashe refused to take the point, went on, lost the game, and the match. And again, I'm not sure we've covered ourselves with glory tonight, just trying to do the best we can. But what we've done, we've done for Arthur. All right, so enough about boxing for just a moment. We'll bring you back to Madison Square Garden for final words. But first, a look ahead to some upcoming entertainment programming here on HBO. You won't see it on the networks. You won't see it in the theaters. You won't see it in your local video store. You only see it here. HBO. Hostages. They formed a bond that could not be broken. Premier Saturday, February 20th. Only on HBO. Before Whoopi, before Eddie, before Richard, they led the way, broke the rules, and changed entertainment forever. Through rare and lost footage, HBO traces the remarkable stories of black comedians who smashed stereotypes with laughter and set the stage for today's superstars. Right. Featuring the greatest performances in the history of black comedy. Mo Funny, black comedy in America, then and now. Premieres Tuesday night at 9.30 on HBO in celebration of Black History Month. And we bring you back live to Madison Square Garden where once again, just to recap, the winner of tonight's heavyweight championship fight, a technical knockout at 2 minutes 19 seconds of round number one, champion Riddick Bowe, obliterating an out of shape, underqualified Michael Dokes to retain his IBF and WBA heavyweight titles.
Coming up immediately following tonight's coverage of World Championship Boxing, stay tuned on the East Coast for the best of Russell Simmons Deaf Comedy Jam Part 1, followed by A Climate for Killing. On the West Coast, you'll see Groundhog Day, HBO First Look, followed by Wayne's World. Next Saturday, live from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, we continue our celebration of 20 years of boxing on HBO as IBF super middleweight champion Iran Barkley defends his title against IBF middleweight champ James Tony. Be sure to join us for live coverage at 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific time. So now, for Larry Merchant, George Foreman, and Harold Letterman, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long from New York City. The executive producer of HBO Sports is Ross Greenberg. Tonight's coverage of World Championship Boxing was produced by Rick Bernstein and directed by Mark Payton. The associate producers were Michael J. Whalen, Kendall Reed, and Steve Cohen. Feature producer, Kirby Bradley. Assistants to the producer, Adam Berger, Dave Leapson, and Artie Curry. Production manager, John McKelly. And the technical supervisor was Dan Barron. presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions.